Thank you for having us uh, this afternoon. My name is uh, Grace Espandola, and I work for Sutter County Superintendent Schools. Um, this is an interesting topic for me. It's an interesting topic in our school system, and I'm glad that we have students here to listen to this. So any feedback and input in this process would be greatly appreciated. So the concept of no to um, bullying is quite a hot topic as we can see from the media, media recently. And you have copies of the PowerPoint. I placed them in front um, in your seats area. So if you'd like to review, I have those for you as well. <clears throat> so we're going to talk a little bit about bullying and trends and solutions. Um, we had a presentation that was held last week by the judicial, uh, Chris, what was that? The Thank you, the Juvenile Justice Commission. And um, so this is a little sna uh, a summary of that presentation and I kind of rearranged a little bit of it because um, some of my other staff presented that information. Um, for those of you that are not aware about uh, 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 one of our departments for Sutter County Office of Education or Sutter County Superintendent Schools is the intervention prevention programs. Often I'm asked, um, what, what is it that you guys offer? What do you do for our kids in our schools? So our mission is stated up there and we have our vision as well. Um, we focus everything specifically on social and emotional learning um, in order to help our students. Um, the goal is academic success and lead positive and successful lives. Part of that, and in addition to that, is that we also provide services to training um, our professionals in schools, direct services, in many areas of tobacco prevention, um, homeless uh, youth, student attendance issues, foster youth. Um, we deal also with uh, drug and alcohol prevention. The bells. Um, School safety. School safety is a major issue of the things that we do for our county schools and districts. So let's talk about some of the data. Okay, this is the most recent data um, that we have on the national bullying trends. Uh, one of the things from a report that was done in 2009 by the U.S. Bureau of Justice um, Statistics, they reported um, in 2009 that one in three students ages 12 through 18 are bullied at school. Bless you. So one in three. So if we look in the audience, how many of our students fit that category from 12 to 18? Can you raise your hand? All of them, right? So one in three of you, according to this report. Um, one in five teens reportedly being um, cyber bullied. Uh, in this number, we're looking at the ages of eight, 10 to 18. So about, approximately about 20% of our youth are considered to be um, bullied by cyber bullied. So when we talk about cyber bullying, we're talking about electronic media, uh, you know, uh, social networks, telephones, etc. How does this affect kids in general? Well, one of the things in our office that we also work with our schools is um, attendance. And so when students are being bullied, one of the numbers that is really um, staggering is that it, an estimate that about 160,000 children miss school because of this issue. So when you look at that, um, you're looking at a com combination of Marysville and Yuba City population together at once that missing on the average of a year of school. Excuse me, total students to school. What's in the news lately? Well, one of the m most recent videos that is quite um, uh, public information is the movie Bully. I don't know, have any of the students or um, audience members attended and seen this movie yet? No? Okay. Well, there was quite controversy about the video because of the fact that the rating on the video and the issues. But the number, uh, the video, the movie is out in theaters and I highly encourage people to go and watch this if you haven't seen it because it gives you a very detailed stories about two students and their issues um, related to bullying. Another way that we can um, identify trends and with data is that we use the California Healthy Kids Survey. The California Healthy Kids Survey has been in existence since 1999 and 
Sutter County Office of Ed was one of the first um, pilot projects in the state when this survey became available to our schools. And what we do is we um, ask students various questions through the survey. And uh, Sutter High School students participate along with all the other school districts in the county. So if we're looking at two statewide data numbers, we're looking at um, the uh, total of 27% of California teens report being bullied on school property. This, this question is based on the last 12 months of attendance, and this data is specifically from 2008 to 2010. 7% of California teens report being cyberbullied. This data includes also non-traditional results, meaning that students that are attend our community schools, they're also included in this. These are all the school districts. I'm sure you're familiar, familiar with all the school districts and the county, so I just wanted to visually give you that opportunity to see them. So let's talk about local data, what's going on here in Sutter County with our kids in bullying. And we look at, we, we, the Cal, California Healthy Kids Survey is conducted every other year. So we conduct this survey with our 5th, 7th, uh, 9th, and 11th, but for this PowerPoint we eliminated 5th um, grade. So in this um, particular question it says verbal harassment on school property. 21% of 7th grade students are indicating that they have been. While the number is higher in 7th, what what is the difference between the 7th and the 9th and the 11th is the fact that most of this is a lot more visibly seen in our middle schools and there's a downshift as it goes into the high school because high school they start using electronic equipment. So physical violence on school property. Being pushed or shoved is the highest prevalence and again 7th grade. Reasons for harassment on, uh, or bullied on school property as well. Cyberbullying, uh, the highest number that we can see there is seventh grade one time in the last 12 months. And as you can see, tw a ninth grade one time um, in the last 12 months. But if you can look at the number, how it increases four or more times up to 11th grade. So let's talk about some common views and myths about bullying. Some people actually think it's a rite of passage. You know, why not? This is the way that uh, boys will be boys. Things, you know, happen, and this is how things um, occur. Well, there's different reasons. Words, will, you know, will never hurt you. Children and youth who are bullied almost, you know, never tell a, an adult. Bullying is a natural part of childhood. These are some of the thoughts that many people commonly share. Well, what we did is we looked at the definition of actual bullying, and we looked at various sources. You know, we looked at the dec dictionary, we looked at different programs, and trying to identify different themes. And the common themes that came together were power, frequency, and intent to harm. So those are the common themes that you can find in various definitions with bullying. So there's also different kinds of bullying, as you can see based on the, on the slide. So if you talk about social, we're talking about exclusion, um, we're talking about verbal, you know, the actual um, comments, physical is the most common that people will probably consider because, you know, physically would be hitting other people. But when you're talking about cyberbullying, this is one of the most challenging ones for our school system because the legislation and the type of how do you identify this has been one of the most challenges. Most recently, new ed code has been adopted with cyberbullying that will help schools to better identify and how to uh, prevent this kind of behavior at schools. Positive school climate has shown to be one of the most effective ways to be able to reduce bullying in any school. So if you're looking at three common themes in positive school climate, you can see that sense of purpose is one, sense of belonging, feeling connected. This is what children need, this is what adults need, these are the ways that you're able to change the climate in a school campus. These are the type of programs that we offer. Second step is a violence prevention program. These are the different schools that we offer the Violence Prevention Program. Virginia Burns from my office, who is here, assists in um, directly implementing, coordinating, and providing these services. 
We also do one of the most effective um, bullying prevention programs is Steps to Respect. Steps to Respect demonstrates with effectiveness in third through sixth grade. Where do we offer these programs? These are the school sites with which we offer these programs. Then there's PLUS. PLUS, I will have uh, leave that alone because there's someone else going to speak on that component. These are the areas that we're effectively providing PLUS, which is a, a, pro, a pilot program that we have out in the South County schools and including Franklin. This is not a promising practice. It's an innovative pro program. There's research that still needs to be done in order to clearly identify more about this program. These are some resources that I think that if you're interested in knowing more information on how we can, as a community, take this on as a challenge, as a crisis, as an issue that is occurring in our schools, how can we come together to provide some additional resources and programs. And this is how you can contact me. If you have any information or if you'd like to refer families or parents or other individuals, this is um, my contact information. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Very, very good overlay. Very good. Here, Jackie Stanfield and John Flo. I didn't change. He's switching over our, our slides. My name is John Flo from Sutter Yuba Mental Health. I'm a prevention services coordinator, and we're working hand in hand with school districts. And rolling out and rolling out um, prevention programs in both Yuba and Sutter County, and I'm here to present the Plus program. I first learned about the Plus program from Wheatland High, or Bear River School, excuse me. And at Bear River School, Corey O'Neill is uh, working there as a school counselor. Was telling me about the Plus program that was happening in their school. They've been uh, using this particular program for the, for the past four years. So I went out to the high or the to the school and uh, sat down with the students. And as they began to um, roll out the program and, and to the new students of that year, we were able to uh, actually see this program firsthand in a school that's already using it. Just to let you know, I provided you these slides as well as uh, the Yellow Ribbon Suicide Prevention Program that we have uh, rolled out to all but three high schools. And in the uh, focus of the PLUS program is again safe schools and uh, in developing safe schools in the, in the way that they do that. It's, it was written by John Vandenberg who is an administrator school teacher as well as a safety coordinator for uh, schools and school districts and um, got to meet him and got to um, talk to him about the PLUS program and talk to him about how we could roll that out into our two counties. As you know, Grace did just a beautiful job showing you about the um, dangers of bullying, bullying, cyberbullying, and all the different aspects of that that's taking place, and all the different critical issues that, that we face in that. And this is one method of being able to uh, work on uh, reducing that within the schools. Again, she did a marvelous job on talking about the national issue as well and, and also the local issue, so I'll skip all of that. Uh, and going into how he designed the program, he designed the program based on creating a label and creating a, a purpose and a meaning for students and taking ownership of their school. The beauty of what I saw at Wheatland High School was the fact that these students took ownership of their school and they talked about things and they were able to talk about their fears and concerns to other peers. And when you have students talking peer to peer, they tend to open up more, as we all know, in talking about their issues within what's going on with them in, in the school. They share those issues and it's a, in a very non-threatening way. And it's then placed into, um, and then it becomes a part of the system of, of keeping their school safe. Just like identifying Nike or gangs or, or any of those kinds of things and, and creating a label you see that, that when youth are able to identify themselves with something and giving them a purpose in something and being a part of something, it makes a very, very powerful uh, connection to the school and then they take ownership of what's going on in the school, uh, which um, 
I've seen when we rolled out the Yellow Ribbon program uh, within the schools, the school leadership is absolutely outstanding. This school right here has an incredible leadership group. I want to give them a hand. Some of them are here. Let's give them a hand, could we? They're, they're just incredible. When they take ownership of the school and, and they know that they have the ability to do that, it's an incredible different place that it puts the students in. And that's what this curriculum does and that's what this program does. It's, it's really, really incredible. It's all about inclusion, all about taking different different uh, youth from different aspects of the school. But the other beauty of this is it gives youth an opportunity that may not have gotten an opportunity to take on a leadership role in the school, it allows them to be able to do that in this program. In this program, uh, all the student body has an opportunity to learn leadership within their school. And that's another dynamic that I think is so powerful about this particular curriculum and how it's used. And again, it's, it has to do with that common aspect of right to passage, initiation, and then inclusion. He used the same concepts that youth are initiated into gangs. He used that same concept in a positive way of being initiated and put into a place of leadership in the school. And it's all about socialization. As, as you heard earlier, as Grace mentioned, one of the core concerns is uh, learning good socialization, learning good purpose, of having a purpose in the school. All of that is a part of this particular program. And that cross connects between how they are taught and how they uh, learn to become a leader and then they become a leader and they have some of those uh, the plus days they wear their t-shirt on those particular days as being identified as a student that's uh, a, a student leader that's a part of that program. And it's a part of recognition part of giving them positive recognition in school. These are the various questions that are asked during any particular session. Uh, the students are asked these questions uh, during those sessions to give feedback. The groups are small. They're in about eight to ten students. They do a, a wide variety of uh, trainings along inclusion. One of them is uh, an activity called, you know, who's on our bus? And then as they allow people on their bus in these large groups, the groups get smaller. And then they talked about why they excluded the other ones that weren't a part of, uh, weren't on their bus. And it, it's a training program of learning how to include versus exclude. And again, as Grace had mentioned, it's been rolled out. The school, 70 students have been taught in South Sacramento, or South uh, Sutter, excuse me, and South Sutter schools, and 200 students have gone through the program since they uh, started, and these are pictures of, of that that you see. And next, uh, um, Jackie Stanfield's gonna come, and she's gonna share with you uh, some additional uh, violence pre prevention programs. Good afternoon. I'm Jackie Stanfield and I'm the Prevention Services Program Manager. And some of the, these are just some of the prevention, violence prevention programs that already exist in our, in our <laughs> county. Uh, the Gang Resistance Education and Training Program is being operated through a grant that the Probation Department received. It involves law enforcement officers providing the training in schools. Um, and the Second Step Program, Grace talked about, it's also a program that we are providing support for through our prevention programs at Sutter Yuba Mental Health. But I, one of the things I wanted to remind everyone about is the connection. The reason that we are knowing so much lately about bullying is that we've heard a lot in the media about how bullying is a risk factor for suicide. There's been a lot of information about that. And so I, also something John gave you is information about our Yellow Ribbon Suicide Prevention Program. And that's a program that's been rolled out in our local schools. We've done that here at Sutter. And we have done that at River Valley, Albert Powell, and Feather, Feather River Academy so far. And what the Yellow Ribbon Suicide Prevention Program does is very simple. It empowers students and tells them it's always okay to ask for help. 
and it trains the staff and trains the students to help each other. Very simple program of how to listen to someone, stay with them, and then help them get connected. The other thing that's just starting is the Applied Suicide Intervention Skills Training. John Flo and Gail Lukeman have been trained to be trainers, and we just graduated our first class of uh, folks who are now trained in this program. And of course, John gave me a list that I can't find of who got, here we go. People who graduated from this program recently included folks from the health departments and the jails in both counties, from Fremont Rideout Hospital, Camptonville Fire Department, Sutter County Probation, Wheatland Police, um, and uh, someone from Truth Tabernacle Church. And so it's a diverse group of people who now have skills in how to deal with someone who they encounter who may be suicidal. And our intention is to make these skills available to many, many people in our community. And what's coming soon is mental health first aid. John's going next week to be trained to be a trainer there. And we'll be bringing those skills back to our community as well. So basically, we've gone from um, the PLUS program, which was brought to our South Sutter County Schools through a grant from our program at Mental Health Prevention Early Intervention. We um, provided them the money to be able to bring John to provide the training for the schools. And we really want to do that more. We want this program to be available to any school that wants it. Um, and we were only able to do two schools this year. Uh, we've applied for a grant through Sierra Health Foundation. We hope if we get more funds, we'll be able to roll out anti-bullying and violence prevention programs in more of our schools. Does anybody have any questions about PLUS or bullying? Not this time. It, it Suicide prevention? Not this time, Mr. Chairman. How many students, students have any questions? It looks like it. Question. Are you guys collect your data just on surveys or which students which data? Can you repeat the question into the microphone? Do you want to come up here? That would be great. Are you done? I was wondering how they collected their data for the first presentation, if it was through surveys or personal questions, where you got your information from the students. The national data was done through surveys through students as well with the state data. Um, actually, I don't have many of you remember, I mean, through seventh or eighth, excuse me, seventh, ninth, or eleventh grade ever did the California Healthy Kids Survey, the Chick Survey, do you guys remember? Okay, so that's the survey that you filled out and that information is included in that overall data. So based on what you're filling out, if it's true or not true, it's relevant, but at the point that they are able to um, disaggregate the data and, you know, come up with a number that is um, relevantly true. And so that's how we get the information. It's from you. Thank you. To the chair. Yeah, James. Yeah, I thought maybe I might ask the students, um, you know, you're, you're seeing this on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, I guess, how many of you would say that bullying is a problem in your school? And how, out of that, so how many of you would say that you think it's worse than when your parents were in school? Raise your hand if you think it's worse than when your parents were in school. I think that cyberbullying is where they're going. I think that um, cyberbullying is more of a problem now because of technology. Like I don't see it at school, but on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and all these places, you see it all the time, and it's it's a big issue. I think in high school especially. The information that I provided you was a very limited snapshot, so it's not that I can go into more details to explain further. So the idea of more information, and I think the students, um, some students in particular will not 
share the fact that they may be cyber bullied or any aspects of the forms of bullying because if you say that to your parent, you might not be able to use the computer. You might get your phone taken away. You know, there's all these other aspects to it. So now, is it more prevalent now to then? Maybe the information wasn't being gathered. The data at that moment wasn't being looked at. So I think the prevalence is much higher but it's also the idea that um, when more awareness is included in things, you will see it more often. So, um, through, through the chair. Yes, Tim. You know, <clears throat> if I could have uh, Mr. Ehlers come down to the microphone, please. Mr. Ehlers, is it Ehlers? I'm sorry. What, who's the quarter? The quarterback. What's your What's your name? <laughs> oh. <laughs> what's his name? Trent Little, I'm sorry. I apologize. Yeah. You know, my apologies, Mr. Little. But obviously, you know, I, the, the reason I called you down here, first of all, is not to uh, put you on the spot or anything. I, th I think that, you know, looking at you in the school, you're, you're the quarterback and, and you're a leader, looked, on, looked upon as a leader at this school. Based on the information that you've seen today and, uh, and, and some of the hands that went up, what do you think you could do as a leader in the school to prevent bullying going on on this campus? Um, I think one thing that leaders can do is uh, join several groups throughout the school to show to be uh, interactive with different type of people, to show people that uh, it's okay to be in a certain type of group and it's not weird or anything like that. And that's a great answer because this is what I see at UBC High School where, where I'm a teacher. Is that there's so many diverse um, fashions, there's so many diverse kids, whether you're with Gothic or whether you're, you're uh, an athlete or whether you're hanging out with, uh, um, seems like gang members. It just seems like we have to, uh, at times, all pull together. Because obviously you're in classes with, with diverse kids as well. And, uh, and some people that are just a little bit different from, from the norm. But I think as, as a leader in a student body, I think that if you pulled those kids and found them a sense of purpose and a sense of belonging to the school, I think that uh, that would be the best way to go. And once again, I wasn't pulling you off to, to uh, you know, put you on the spot because I'm sure that your other peers are up there are, are probably thinking the same thing. So I really appreciate you coming uh, up here and addressing that question, and thank you. Yeah, no problem. Thanks, Trent. Are there any other questions on the subject? Board? Students?